you are now on the keyboard where is a where is b where is oh i got my password wrong it's going to take you another 15 minutes to figure out your password Welcome to my channel once more. My name is Priscilla Kuma. If this is the first time you are clicking on my video, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Share this video with others. Okay, nurse preceptorship. What is that? What is that big word? Basically, training. Training of a new grad or an overseas nurse. So I'm going to focus more on my overseas nurse because most of you know I create content on nurse and migration. I originally come from Ghana, schooled in Ghana, worked in Ghana for over five years before coming to the US to restart my nursing career again and kick it off. So this information is coming from a very experienced person. I have been precepted before and I've been a preceptor before, meaning I have been trained before and I've been in trainee before. So I've been in both shoes. So this video is going to go both ways as a trainer and as a trainee so if you see preceptorship adaptation training whatever don't panic okay it's just basically how to train a nurse a new grad or a nurse in a different environment or a different setting you change your unit you change your country you change your workflow you move to a different place how to ease off onto the new place you found yourself now and as a foreigner who did not school in the US, I'm sure you've heard a lot about how nursing in America is very different. And you're wondering how it is, what at all it is about. Okay, calm down, watch this to the end, and I'm going to give you all the key points here. And once more, I am a lead consultant for US RM Pathway Consult. We help midwives, general nurses, and psychiatry nurses or mental health nurses based on whatever you call them in your country to be able to write the NCLEX, RN, and then come to the USA and work as a nurse in USA, okay? So maybe you have already written your NCLEX, you are eagerly waiting to enter America, or you are about to start your journey, or you are already halfway through the process, whatever, you're going to get trained. You're going to have a preceptor. You're going to have a trainer. And either you are a new grad, fresh from school, very panicky, you don't know what to expect, and uh, you found this video, do watch to the end, okay? So, as I was saying, preceptorship is basically training. If you're in a new environment, a new field, new job, somebody will train you. But ideally, for a nurse, a registered nurse, on paper, your preceptorship, your training should be about 12 weeks. That's three good months. Mind you, you can extend it if you think you are not okay. So, your preceptor can make you or break you whoever trains you can make you hate the job or make you love the job I wish you all the best I pray you have a good preceptor so me coming to America if you've been following my channel for some time now you know I started off as a PCT patient care technician or basically CNA or nursing assistant whilst waiting to retake the boards the NCLEX for America to be able to practice the RN that I was um, before coming to America so even for my cna job my pct job i was trained that is about four weeks four to five weeks i had to follow somebody around and before i forget there's something called shadow so you're looking for a job you've applied for all the jobs then you go and shadow the jobs shadow you go to the job to see what happens at the job this is even way before you interview for the job and get a job so you go, you follow somebody around for like two, three hours, you ask questions, the person is telling you, this is what we do on our floor, this is what we do in the office, this is what we do here, this is how we do it. And how do you like the job? So you do shadow, then you do an interview, then they ask you what you think of the job. So the shadow is a very good thing. It helps you make decisions if you really want to be on this floor. If you're lucky and you see the, the floor, the ward, the unit, the office, the job for what it is on that day, if you, you come in to shadow and you see the words, patients leaving the floor, patients getting confused, like so busy, doctors are putting orders, you see all that, then you know what to expect. But if you are un unlucky and you, the day you can come to see the job, you come to shadow and everything is so smooth sailing, you'll be deceived until you finally assume that role and realize, wow, this wasn't the floor I came to shadow on. <laughs> so you always want to pray for the day that you see the real 
craziness on the units or the job or the wherever you're going to work then you make your decisions well and then accept the job offer that's just by the way so i shadowed and i got a cna job and i started working as a, as a cna but where i live up in new york we call it pct i did not go to a cna school because as i said i had over six or seven years experience before coming here to convert so it was easier for me to get into that role so zoom in so i assumed the assistant job i was trained for four weeks i followed somebody hi nikki if you're watching this so I followed Nikki around, she showed me everything you're doing, this is how we do it, this is how we get blood pressure, this is the storage room, this is the time we take our break, if a patient wants this thing, this is where you find it. So basically that's just about CNA orientation and how to use the gadget was a big one. The higher lift, all the gadgets you use to do mobility or move patients around, the wheelchairs, different types, commode, how you use heart table, bedside table, dynamap to check blood pressure or maximo, the one on the wall, a whole lot. So basically they show you how the work flows on that unit that you find yourself. For the nursing, so I did that and I worked at a CNA for some time. And then finally, I wrote my NCLEX, passed my NCLEX, very happy, got an RN job and began working as a registered nurse. So RN preceptorship is what I will tell you more about because that's what most of you are interested in. So that one, that's where you go and shadow the job, you have the job. But for you watching from overseas, you, do, you don't do shadow because you have the job offer before you even enter America. So, so new grad, you went to shadow the job, you like the job, you live in America, you did the shadow. For those watching outside, you have the job offer, you show up. You are very panicky because you know American nursing is entirely different. You are so scared. What am I going to do? Anyway, don't be. As I said, ideally on paper, you have to get 12 good months of training and preceptorship. And because of COVID, we don't, they didn't go. Some people didn't get the entire 12 because they had to quickly rush and get you off orientation so that you can come and help the unit. But things are stabilizing now. You might get at least 10 to 12 weeks of orientation so it should be good two and a half to three months orientation and even after that if you're not good as i said you can always ask for extension so basically day one you show up at the job then they give you a binder a file and with a checklist and things in it that uh and with your the name of your preceptor sometimes they give you two preceptors two preceptors sometimes they give you three because you're going to be doing morning shifts uh the afternoon evening one and then the night one so you move along so they let you follow different kind of people and see their work flow and work pace and adapt to the one that works for you and in doing that as well you find the shift that works for you if it's morning shifts or evening shifts we call it day and evening or night those are the shifts we have in america we don't have morning and afternoon we call it day shift which is 12 hours starts from let's say 7 a.m to 7 p.m. Then we have evening. Evening can start from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. or 3 p.m. to um, 11 p.m. Then we have the night shift that is 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning. So these are the three shifts. Yes, I know somebody does 3 a. 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. So yeah, I don't know how you get off work at 3 a.m. Hi, Carissa. You were the cameraman for one of my videos I put on my channel with uh, Stephanie about the accent challenge. That was Carissa behind the cha uh, the camera. Yeah, she does 3 to 3, 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. 12 hour shifts. Okay. So you show up, they give you the binder, they meet you in the office, they welcome you to the unit, they tell you about the unit, and they give you an orientation, a physical orientation of the building. They show you all the rooms, this is our patient's room, this is our clean utility room, this is our dirty utility room, this is our soil room, this is where we keep oxygen, this is where we keep this and that, this is the secretary, these are the files, this is the computer and all. Mind you, you would do computer training first before you show up on the unit because it's paperless over here. There's no paper, uh, paper and pen that you'll be using to write for patients. So you would have done a classroom computer training. Sometimes they do it for a week, sometimes two weeks, where you go to a computer lab. All the newly hired people who be in the lab every day with this topic, they'll show you how to document on a patient's chat, how to open a chat, how to edit something. If you want to do, find the notes. There are shortcuts or dot phrases for notes. You just keep in like pre-medication. You just do dot pre-med and a whole note comes up. You enter that and then you just use F2, the key 
the F2 key on the keyboard, just do F2 and now auto fill this ones and accept or submit it for the patient and you go. So they'll show you the little tricks, but it's gonna be so vague, extremely vague. You'll be so lost in that computer class. Everybody who's done it says the same thing. You'll be so lost in the computer class until you come onto the unit, the floor, the ward, before you implement whatever you were taught in the computer class. Do you get it? Yes. So imagine somebody just teaching you that and the, the doctor will put the orders here. This is where you find the order. This is how you put the order in. It's just vague until so you come into real life and they now put a real order. Then you now know how to input it. Yeah. So you've done the computer training for a week or two. Most hospitals use e-record. Others have other apps that they use and for documentation or patient charts. So you come to the unit and then they, did a, they do the physical training of the building. This is our office, this is the lunch room, this is the lunch timetable. This is how we take our holidays, our vacation. We do it according to seniority. This is the book you have to fill if you want a day off and those things. They do all that for you. And then maybe the next day you come in and you go with your very, very first preceptor. You're going to be so restless so anxious so nervous all night you might not be able to sleep you are panicking about oh my god i'm going to the uni i don't know how it's gonna be they're gonna think i don't know anything from nursing school or i don't know anything from my country oh god I, you'll be so anxious until you go and, and if you have a lovely preceptor who welcomes you the very first day you'll be good to go so as i said you have a checklist you can call it a logbook based on wherever you're watching this from then they start you off sometimes two patients mostly the statue of two patients because in america you don't just show up at work and have the whole floor the whole water the whole unit they assign you patients based on their room number or bed number so they will assign you one room if that one room is semi-private two people are in that room then they assign you two patients to start with if you're lucky they might assign you one if the ward capacity is up to like three or four whatever they might start you at one or one patient for maybe first two weeks and they upgrade you based on how you're doing they add another patient then you move to three patients four patients five patients if you happen to be a unit on a unit where they can go as high as eight which is not ideal one nurse to eight patients is a lot but i've seen that before where i used to work as a pct yes they'll go they can even go as high as 10. that place was hell terrible <laughs> They were like, wow, Priscilla left us and it's rallying us. Yeah, it was just too stressful for the nurses that I felt bad for them then. Okay, so they started you with two patients. What you want to do if they say work start at seven, please and please and please again, take it from me. You want to be at work by your com on your computer by 6.30 a.m. Half hour to hand over or take up because you're new. It's going to take you time, especially fellow Africans that we are not used to using computers to do documentation. You are now on the keyboard. Where is A? Where is B? Where is... Oh, I got my password wrong. It's going to take you another 15 minutes to figure out your password. You're going to have so many passwords at the end of all these. And you finally log in. You don't know where to find the patient's chat. And even if you enter the chat, you're trying to look for... What are you looking for in the patient's chat? What do you need before you even go and take up? You need the right information to go take up from the night nurse to be able to ask the right questions. But first, they don't even know what you are looking at. So you're just sitting there writing patient's name and age and taking your time because you don't know what's next to write. You might find diagnosis, but there are some key things you want to know. This person is going for dialysis at 7 a.m. They have issues with their blood pressure. They need to get the mydodrine tablets before they go for dialysis. There are some medications they cannot get until they come back. You need to figure those out. You need to get that patient all ready, dressed up, ready to get out. So then you need to go to dialysis at 7 a.m. Transportation has come in to come and take the patient. You have not had taken up. You don't know what is going on. Maybe the person's IV has been come off overnight. You don't know. Yes. So it's normal for everybody. New day, first day on the job, new nurse, new environment. You might have 20 years experience from a different country. But as soon as you enter another country, it's an entirely different ballgame. See yourself, my advice, see yourself as a brand new nurse. See yourself as a new grad. If not, you're going to be very demoralized. Your self-esteem is going to drop down. For my fellow people watching from, from Ghana, 
I was on SVTV Africa on YouTube. If you haven't checked them out, go check them out. And the title of the video was My Self Esteem Dropped Down to Zero to Three Percent When I Got to a Hospital in America, Even After My Years Experience. That was the title of the YouTube video. That's how they titled it. Yeah. So you'll be like, oh, for 15 years, shouldn't be so different. Trust me. It's entirely different for an overseas nurse. The gadgets are all different. The environment is different. The, the documentation is entirely different. You haven't used that app before. As every new thing, you buy a new car, it's very different how to push to start or ignition, key, you, everything is going to be different. I'm not scaring you. This is a very frank channel where I come very true. Nothing is paraphrased, nothing is sugar coated. I just give it to you as it is. You all know me already. Okay. So you got you write your things, you might have like some paper you do. Some units have a, a pre-printed paper about the things you need to write down. So there's a, it's already printed name, age, diagnosis, procedure, results, whatever. So you just fill in the empty boxes and then you take that and go and take up. Yes, yeah, so you just do that and you go and take up reports from the night nurse. The night nurse is talking, you are all lost, you don't know the terms, they are using all the jargons and they are doing all saying all these medical terms and the patient has done this and LP was done last night. You don't even know what LP is. Lumbar puncture, you are all lost and BG is this, blood glucose and this and that. Ah and all this massa, ESBL, and you are all confused. Don't worry, you would get it. I was at that point too and you would have to ask questions if you want to be a good nurse you have a trainer you want to ask questions so the preceptor if they are too fast you want to let them know if they are too slow you can tell them but you should pick up with their pace if not you all gonna get out after 13 14 hours i used to get out when i first started the shift of 12 hours i get out almost 14 hours because documentation i'll now sit down and i'll be feeling guilty that oh my god i'm holding my preceptor back should have been gone home now blah 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 because i'm slow i'm trying to find out where q is so i can type on the keyboard and all that yes so basically you work their shift whatever hours they they be working originally you work that shift and so you do, they upgrade you from two patients, three patients, four patients. And based on how you're doing, sometimes you do weekly meetings or two weeks meetings. When they upgrade to three patients, they sit you down. How is it going with you? Do you think it's too much? Should we take one patient off? Are you catching up? What do you want? What are your goals at the end of this orientation? What do you want to achieve? Shortcoming, can you improve on? you are too slow or you spend so much time on your documentation then you will tell them by the end of this week i want to be able to know how to do this i want to pick up my pace i want to come earlier i want to leave the units before to, uh, the 12 hour shifts or like before i want to leave i don't want to send stay there to 14 hours you will now input your goals you and the nurse manager and the charge nurse and your preceptor sometimes the charge nurse might not be there so the nurse manager the preceptor and yourself you sit down after every session to discuss how you are finding the job and anything they can do to support you as a unit so they upgrade again to four patients they have the meeting you fill out your goals they look at the previous goals and say oh you said you were gonna do this and i think we see that you leave the unit earlier now you don't stay 14 hours you leave 13 hours that's an improvement and also that they did something for this patient and um it was impressive i now know you able to scan your medications faster all by yourself things like that so you'll be following the preceptor then they might switch to another preceptor that might be doing a different shift maybe 11 a.m to 11 p.m then you try that shift out as well but you always want to ask questions you always want to know why you are doing something the preceptor is going to ask you whether you like it or not what medication are you given why are you giving that medication what does the medication do i remember my preceptor <laughs> she used to say priscilla it's not all about scanning you need to know what you're doing and what you're giving to what if you don't know what you're giving then why are you giving it because some patients or most patients will ask you what is that blue tablet they know their medication they want to test you and see how you're doing based on they not having faith in you you come in you are all shaky you don't have self-confidence what medication is that you're training her huh? does your training know what she's doing it's comments like that will be coming from patients family members they will say call me the nurse meanwhile you're also a nurse you have your rm badge on you call me the nurse 
and stuff like that and uh, so you want to know the medication you are given and why you're giving it you want to have your documentation on point every procedure you should be eager to do it i was attached to one person shout out manuela my trainer fellow sister from cameroon i was attached to a trainer uh, a preceptor who was training me but anytime a procedure comes there oh they are doing a pick line for a patient oh they are doing pick line dressing i'm eager to run there and watch it oh they are fa flashing the nephrostomy tube oh they are doing alien tummy oh they're doing a the lumbar puncture they are doing the dressing change the wound nurse is here respiratory is here they're setting up some of cpap i'm running around running around i lost so much weight if you go back to my videos almost two and a half years ago i lost so much weight at that time too yeah so you should be eager to learn you should be very inquisitive that's one of the attributes of a nurse you should be very inquisitive ask questions if you don't know don't go and try it and hurt somebody if you go and try somebody and kill somebody you are doomed the suction machine is that the chest tube is hooked up to the suction on the wall you turn the dial down you're killing somebody you unclamp something you are, you are not supposed to unclamp you are doomed so you always want to be watched your pre might say, oh, I'm going to pee. I'm going to take um, a bathroom break. Go and do this. If you don't feel comfortable, don't go. Wait. Tell the preceptor, please, I'd rather wait for you. Wait for the preceptor to come and stand there and watch you. If you're doing head to toe assessments, you're listening to the lung sounds, you don't hear something clearly, please, can you also come listen and confirm? This is what I heard. Can you come and confirm? A good preceptor will come and double check you. If you are documenting something you don't know what to write show your documentation the sentences that you've typed pay the notes that you've written the discharge notes admission notes let them overlook it because mind you the login is unique to you anything that you type in it shows that you assess that person's file at that time it's your typing and it can be used against you you do not want to get sued as a brand new nurse new grad you do not want to get sued as an overseas nurse this is a lot of information but as i said 12 12 weeks three months you would be trained throughout the whole process make sure you make good use of it it can be called adaptation training preceptorship but the preceptorship word is the general one american uses other countries like ireland i think they use adaptation or something and also there's a residency program take advantage of residency program in another video i'll tell you about my residency program experience and why you should join and take advantage of it that's a one-year program you should enroll in it will really 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 benefit you it's like us oxy or hands-on practicals or simulation lab you go and play with all this you assume roles code and all that so residency is something you also want to take advantage of yes so then you move to night shifts you go and test the night shifts out as well this is somebody who is in the hospital doing bedside you might be an outpatient and the shift is only one but they will still train you you still have a preceptor but oh, I always advise overseas nurse just because that's what i am that you want to start in the hospital before moving out of the hospital this is very coming from a good point good place test and tried tried and tested and it will help you a lot american nursing is different from what you know in south africa in your country in cuba in ghana nigeria zimbabwe it's entirely different and if you do hospital bedside nursing for at least minimum do it for at least two years because anywhere you are going to if you want to do travel nursing they're looking for two years experience some are looking for one year experience but somebody who schooled in america's one year experience is not the same as you who schooled outside the u.s your one year experience when they throw you out there in the travel nursing field you will come back home very depressed i always say this in one year 12 months working three days a week three days a week how many weeks is that how much have you learned three days four times a month three times four is 12 12 times 12 how many hours did you spend in the hospital to be able to know much so go now and be on your own you can't fly solo if you don't have rich experience the travel nurses that come to our unit we give them the horrible assignment we don't support them we don't help them at all because of what they make four five six times what you make so we let you have the hard time on the unit are you willing to be an overseas nurse or a new grad nurse, get one year experience and run and be traveling? 
the system will chew you up they'll say she's not a good nurse she's so clumsy she doesn't know what she's doing and all so at least stay in the hospital bedside for two years pick up i remember less than i think exactly a year on the job i began picking assignments on other floors i went to neurosurgical i went to neuro i went to rehab i went to other units and it was like going on a travel assignment I didn't know any staff over there. I didn't know the patient population, but I was eager to take on that challenge. I went there to pick up overtime. I was a, I was floating. That's if you see someone inside my float nets, they are floating to other units. It's a new environment to me because this is not my unit. So I go there and they throw horrible assignments at me. And I don't know anybody. I don't have any friends to ask over there. So you just have to brace yourself up and do all those tasks. Yes, and it really, really enriched my skills. It helped me a lot. I struggled through it, but after I went to that floor one time, they, I went to that floor again. The next time I picked up, one time the women were going to give me charge nurse because everybody called in. They were, we were really sure. about three nurses for the whole unit the whole night. No PCT, no CNA, nothing. And they were like, you've been on this unit before. I think out of the three, two of us are from different units and only one person was a staff. And she hasn't even done the training. This was COVID time. It was scary. She had not done the training as a, a nurse. A charge nurse that she had to do because that's her floor. So now we're asking her, where do we do this? Like, I don't know. Let me call my nurse manager to him. She's calling the nurse manager. It was fun. Yeah. So to be a preceptor, you have to sign up and go and attend a class and do some training and pass some tests before they will give you the chance to be a preceptor, to train somebody. You don't just get up and train somebody. There's a class you go. And when you go for that class, then you now have the skills to train somebody. Yes. And some preceptors are paid for being a preceptor. But some of them are not paid. But ideally, if you're a preceptor, go fight for your money. Because one, the person you are training, you're going to be talking a lot. Talking a lot is stressful. The person is going to slow you down. You're going to be going home late. You might skip your lunch at some time because your, your trainee is not done. So the preceptorship pays. So if you are somewhere and you have the chance to be a preceptor, take the class and be a preceptor and train somebody. I have trained other people as well, but I did not do the preceptor course. I had to train a capstone student. She was in final year and she had already got a job. So she had to come and do about three weeks. She stayed with me. I trained her on the job and she was good. I was on the adult floor message and she was going to... Um, the NICU. She need she didn't like the adult medicine nursing. So she wanted to like child train on the child, neonates, ICU, whatever. Yes. So I did that capstone student because she was in the capstone program. You will know about that as the time goes on. And also I trained somebody on the job in an outpatient setting. I have been around in this short stay. I have I've I've been in this country. I've really taken up taken up a lot of challenges. So that's basically nurse preceptorship. And you watching will be a preceptee or a trainee and you want to capitalize on it so don't be afraid that when i come they will throw me in the environment i already know what to do no you'll be well trained you'll be trained sometimes they train you in the lab they train you in an OSCE environment a practical environment and all before they even bring you onto the unit Sometimes you just do the computer training, classroom training, they welcome you to the house facility, tell you all about the hospital, when it was founded, the patient capacity, bed capacity, and all that, and the area they serve. And then they do the computer training, training, they ask about you and your experience and where you are coming from. Do not be shy. Tell them your name, how long you've been a nurse, and where you are from. Before you get to the unit, they have your resume, they have your CV, before you end up on the floor that you have been assigned to or hired for trust me that information is already on the units waiting you would not know who carries that information they know that you are a nurse from nigeria you have five years experience you are a nurse from kenya you have 10 years experience and their expectation is extremely high we got we're getting a uh, we are getting an experienced nurse experienced nurse is coming over she has 10 years experience then you show up you don't know where the dynamap is. You don't know where the masmo is. You don't know where to press. You don't know how to use the bladder scanner. You don't know how to use the... <laughs> it's a whole drama. But after you pick up your confidence, you pick up your pace, you ask a lot of questions, you let them know that 
forget all that luckily for me the person who trained me as i said came from cameroon and though she's cool yeah she's been here a lot all her life almost all her life she knows she still has touch back home and knows how healthcare back home in africa looks like in most of west and east africa and all the stuff so i keep telling her girl i've not seen this before you better show me how to use this because you know we don't have this back home so that made it easy for me but do not be afraid to speak up if your preceptor is not helping you go to the nurse manager not that you're going to report but go and say from a point of looking out for the unit if i keep saying units the word the floor go to a point of i'm a team player i want to stay on this floor i like i really like you guys i want the patient to be safe i want to be a committed member but i think that uh, i need more training and then my preceptor is too fast for me is there a way i can switch with somebody else and come back to that preceptor later on when i finally catch my pace you want to be very strategic about how you go about this if not it's like you're reporting the nurse or you are throwing the nurse under the bus but you always have to look out for yourself that nurse has built her experience and she might even leave that floor one day and you don't want to come off orientation still not knowing anything they're not going to say the trainer did not train her well. They'll say she got the whole 12 weeks orientation and still don't know how to do this. And when you get off orientation, the first day, they'll be like, yeah, congratulations, you're going to fly solo. All eyes are on you. What did I say? All eyes are on you. When you get off orientation, they want to see whether you make a mistake. They want to see whether you keep your room tidy. They want to see what the patients will say about you. They want to see what time you hand off. They want to see whether you leave something undone. They want to see whether you'll be closing and getting home late. Oh, you're still here? Do you need help? A very good unit will support you. Even if you get off orientation, a preceptorship training orientation, they will still, the good unit will still support you. They will still check on you. A good nurse manager or a charge nurse will always be checking on you. They will not leave you alone like that. If they are well staffed, which they hardly are these days, but they'll be checking up on you. And if you need any information, the charge nurse is always there. On a good unit, the charge nurse should not have assignments. That's ideal. That's on paper. The charge nurse doesn't have patient assignment. Their job is to stand by and assist any nurse that is struggling and assist the floor and go for board bed board meetings and do world rounds and this and that. So I always run to them. Can you help take this patient of mine to dialysis? Can you take the EKG list off for this person? Can you do this for me, please? You got to use them. You can't just say, I can't go and ask for help. Always speak up. Ask for help. Watch out for your own welfare first. If you're not doing well on orientation, speak up. If they are too fast for you, speak up. If it's not working for you, you need a change of assignment, a change of environment, whatever. Take an initiative. If you don't speak up, a closed mouth is never fair. Nobody knows what you're going through. Nobody knows your struggles. And after you go through two, three preceptors, you would adapt things from each of them. This preceptor might hang all their fluids before they take the machine to the room. This preceptor will do it the other way and all. So you might pick up the ones that would work for you. The tips that help them to be fast, you pick up different people. That's why it's good not to be with one person throughout. Ideally, you wouldn't be with one person. They would let you have different skills from different people. Then you adapt the one that works for you. Yes. And when you get off orientation, after a few months, you'll be like, wow. You, you'd, it's, it's difficult doing something. Everybody's watching you. The eyes on you and your hands are shaking. You are training the whole 12 months. They're watching you. Will she do the assessments well? Will she document this information well and stuff? But when you're on your own, you like you have freedom, you're independent, you're able to make the decisions yourself. Because sometimes the preceptor might not allow you time to think. Why are you doing this? You know it, but you know it's taking you time to put your thoughts together and you're like, okay, you don't know it. I'll tell you this, that, 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 that. No. But when you're on, you're going to decide. Prioritization that you see on NCLEX. You went to nursing school, you studied so hard, and you passed. You were still essential. So doubt not yourself. Let nobody tell you you're not good. Let nobody tell you you don't know anything. You went to the same nursing school. You wrote the same essential. You passed it. Yes. So you should be able to work 
to your full effect. You should be able to prove yourself. You should be able to make them believe you know what you're doing. And when you get off orientation, you want to say thank you. You can bring some little donuts, some cookies, anything to the unit, the floor, the ward, and say thank you for training me. It was nice. I'm off now. I'm happy. Let's celebrate me or be in off orientation. And that will leave an indelible mark on their mind that, wow, she's so thoughtful. She's so kind. She appreciated the time we spent on her because other nurses will be also will also be helping you. They'll find something a copy. So like, come and watch this. Do you want to do it? I have a patient with a port. Do you want to assess it? I have a patient with a pick line. Do you want to put a TPA? Things like that. So they all as a unit come to help you. So we are saying thank you. Don't just bring something to your preceptor or the chart nurse or nurse manager. No, you bring something to the whole unit to benefit from and enjoy. So yeah, I hope this has been helpful. In my next video, watch out for that. I will try and talk about residency program. I was in it for a whole year. It was very beneficial. I'll give you all the details. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you everybody for coming on here. Yeah, we and uh, we have 8,000 and I'm so impressed. Share this video with others. And the name remains Bisla Kuma. Registered from Ghana. Grew up in Nigeria. Moved to Ghana. Ghana to America. And uh, I'm here with my family and I love doing content to help those behind me because I didn't have this opportunity when I was on this journey alone. Thank you, take care and stay positive. Doubt not yourself, you'll be able to be a USRN one day and you'll function to your full effect. Take care, bye-bye.